students. Today, in biology, we will take the topic classifying plants. In this lesson, we will learn how to classify plants and which are the characteristics of each one. You have to know that scientists have identified more than 260,000 kinds of plants. They classify plants according to whether they have body parts such as seeds, tubes, roots, stem and leaves. The three main groups of plants are seed plants, ferns and mosses. Scientists have divided the plants into large groups. Vasular plants have tube-like cells. These cells form tissue called vasular tissue. The tissue forms tubes that transport food and water through the plant. Vasular means vessel or tube. Seed plants and ferns are vasular plants. Vasular plants have well-developed leaves, stem and roots. Because of vasular tissue, this plant can grow larger because its leaves and stems do not need to be near water. Vasular tissue is thick and provides support for a plant. This allows the plant to grow tall. Non-vasular plants do not have tube-like cells. Mosses, as example, are non-vasular plants. These plants are short and must have contact with moisture. These plants usually grow in damp, shady places, on the ground and on the side of trees and rocks. Let's learn some characteristics of seed plants. Seed plants are different from ferns and mosses because they use seeds to reproduce. A seed is a plant part that contains a beginning plant and stored food. The beginning plant is called an embryo. The seed has a seed coat which holds in moisture. Seed plants have the most advanced vascular tissue of all plants with well-developed leaves, stems and roots. Seed plants come in many different sizes and shapes. This helps them live in many different places. Seed plants are the largest group of plants. They are divided into groups flowering plants and non-flowering plants. Flowering plants are known also as angiosperms. Angiosperms are divided into monocots and dicots. Most angiosperms are dicots, which contain two cotyledons. A cotyledon is a structure in the seed that contains food for the developing plant. A bean is an example of a large dicot seed. Let's say some characteristics of angiosperms decots. When a bean is planted, the plant appears to have two leaves. If you split a bean apart, you may be able to see the two leaves in the tiny embryo. If you look at the leaves of a decot plant, the veins are branched or net-like. This is another property of a decot. Most flowering plants are decots. Animals eat decots in the form of fruits and vegetables. Other examples of decots are oak trees, roses, sunflowers and giant redwood trees. While angiosperms monocots have only one cotyledon, when a monocot begins to grow from a seed, only one leaf appears. Also, the veins in the leaf are parallel. Monocots include grass, corn, wheat, rice, and flowers such as lilies and orchids. Gymnosperms are known as non-flowering plants. The seeds of gymnosperms are not surrounded by fruit. The seeds are produced inside cones. For example, pine trees form on the scales of cones. The major group of gymnosperms is conifers, which are cone-bearing gymnosperms. All conifers are woody shrubs or trees. Most conifers have green leaves all year. Because of this, they are called evergreens. Conifers leaves are shaped like needles. They do not lose water as easily as broad leaves. They can live in dry places. Other gymnosperms include the ginkgo tree, which has fan-shaped leaves. They are able to survive pollution better than other trees. Which are the two main groups of seedless plants? They are ferns and mosses. 
Ferns are vascular plants but do not have seeds, while mosses are non-vascular plants and also do not have seeds. Let's say some characteristics of fern. Like other vascular plants, ferns have well-developed leaves, stems and roots. The fern's leaves or fronds are usually large and flat. They are divided into leaflets that spread out from a center rib. On the other side of the fronds, you can see small dots called sori. These are clusters that contain the reproductive cells of the fern, called spores. When the spores are ripe, the sori burst open and release the spores into the air. The rhizome is a plant part that shoots above ground and roots below ground. Fern spores that drop in a moist place produce a tiny plant or rhizome. Mosses are gymnosperms. They are non-vascular plants and do not have well-developed leaves, stems and roots. They do not have vascular tissue to transport water, so they must live in moist, shady places. Mosses get water through root like threads called rhizoids. Like ferns, mosses reproduce by spores. They will produce a great number of spores. Mosses can grow in places where other plants cannot, because their roots are so tiny. Mosses grow on tree bark, rocks and in thin soil. Now for homework. Describe vascular and non-vascular plants and also you will describe the angiosperms and gymnosperms. Goodbye for today.